This is Chris Ruddy, and I love Gene Valentino's Grassroots Truth Cast. Make sure you're tuning in just like I do every day, every week, every minute. A large retail store just canceled a huge order, leaving us with a ton of extra my pillows. But you know what? That's their loss. I'm going to make it your gain. For the first time ever, you get standard classic my pillows for wholesale prices, only $14.88. I can't believe I'm even saying that. Only $14.88. But it gets even better. For a limited time, I'm going to offer my entire classic collection at wholesale prices. Upgrade to a queen size my pillow for just $18.88. King size, only a dollar more. Get my body pillows for $29.88 and multi-use my pillows for only $9.88. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on the screen. Use your promo code to take advantage of wholesale pricing for the first time ever on TV, including my standard size my pillow, only $14.88. They've never been offered this low before. We have limited quantities at this price, so limit's going to be 10 and once they're gone, they're gone. With breaking news and political commentary from a public servant, serial entrepreneur, community leader, philanthropist, and American patriot, and a darn nice guy, it's time for the Grassroots Truthcast and your host, Gene Valentino. Hi friends, Gene Valentino, and welcome to another episode on Gene Valentino's Grassroots Truthcast. We have guests on from all walks of life, political, social, but I'm so proud to have with me today someone who I'm sure you recognize, Dinesh D'Souza. Oh boy, how to describe Dinesh D'Souza. Hello, Mr. D'Souza, how are you? I'm doing well and thanks for having me on the podcast. Our goal today in the time we have is to introduce Vindicating Trump. Vindicating Trump is I think uh, the sixth, correct me if I'm wrong, the sixth movie or thereabouts that Dinesh D'Souza has written, co-produced, uh, produced, in various uh, shapes or form. This one brings us to the theme I hope we really get to today, Dinesh, and that's the deep state activity, which you have exposed so well in the uh, series of episodes you've presented to the American citizens. And we're gonna start, folks, with the trailer on the most recent uh, release, Vindicating Trump. Check it out. Somebody has to help this country, and if they don't, the country and the world are in big trouble. Someone's got to overturn the tables in the temple. Trump jumping into the presidential race. Power. She's a bit worried. Of the apprentice guy? You know the feeling of power. Could you handle it or would it devour? Power. They fear that power. You didn't do an insurrection. Had you called for one, there would have been one. Mm -hmm. And there would be one if you called for one now. I'm not sure I want that power. I want the power just to make the country better. America first! And that scares them. A lot about Donald Trump scares them. Let's look at everything. Campaign, his family. Let's get foreign eyes on him. We have one target. You know who he is. Going after their companies, their families. That is a dictator. It's a very dangerous time for our country. The goal is to put him in jail because they're so afraid of his voice. I am your voice. We'll bury him so deep in legal, it'll bankrupt them. Broke down in jail right before the election. That's Sorry for being that guy, but isn't that election interference? It's not interference if we do it. We just want a free and fair election. Sounds expensive. Ballots ain't cheap. Wait, wait, wait. Did you actually say the word buy the ballots? We were able to purchase 10,000 ballots. That's terrifying. They cheat in many different ways. That's all they're good at. Ready to save democracy? We need to stop him permanently. And that person will be risking his life. Too bad it's not the 60s, right? It's the way you survived. I said, get me up. Trump has beaten back every attack against him. It's like the damn tyranny. We're gonna fix our borders and we're gonna fix our elections. We're gonna win. This is my legacy. Vindicating Trump. The best is yet to come. Only in theaters, September 27th. Welcome back, folks. We're with Dinesh D'Souza. Uh, he is a, a author. He's a, a political commentator. He's a filmmaker, and he's done so many great things. I will not call him a felon because I think the charges brought against him, Dinesh, correct me if I'm wrong, were off base. 
out of line, politically motivated, and that's an extension of uh, vindicating Trump, I hope you segue into. But you've got seven movies out there. Uh, Obama's America, America Imagine the World Without Her, Hillary's America, The Secret History of the Democratic Party, The Death of a Nation, that was out in 2018. Then the one uh, I really liked was uh, 2000 Mules, and most recently released within a, a few weeks ago, Vindicating Trump. Let's start with promoing Vindicating Trump. What's, what's, your, what's your reason for bringing this out at this time? It's the brand new film. It couldn't be more timely. It couldn't be more urgent. It makes the case for Trump, both the man and his policies. It exposes the way in which the enemies of Trump have been trying various forms of assassination, I'd have to say, to get him. And in the movie, I divide that into character assassination. That's how it started. Then political assassination, lawfare or legal assassination. And now two actual assassination attempts. The centerpiece of the film is a very riveting one-on-one -on -one conversation with Trump in which I try to bring out a side of him that is an important part of his character, but it's one that he resists showing in public. He has a kind of manly aversion to showing his feelings, about any sense of vulnerability, how his mind works. But I think I was able to bring all that out in a one-on-one -on -one dialogue with Trump, and that is right there in the film. And I also noticed Alina Haba, uh, Donald Trump's attorney, uh, a, a very, a very uh, self-made and renowned attorney in in her own right. Uh, uh, as your uh, guest on the movie, along with Laura H Trump, uh, head of the REC, and together they provided you so much insight. Those two ladies, I think, and with your production and your uh, your, your movie in general, gave insight to a side of Donald Trump. I hope others have come to see. He's, I, I um, carefully, yeah, I carefully picked the two of them. Melina Hub, of course, talks more about the legal cases and she is able to expose the way in which these cases are, they're really fraudulent. You know, they, if it, if the defendant was anyone else other than Trump, really, I think none of these cases would be brought. With Laura Trump, she has sort of a dual purpose. I wanted her to talk about Trump up close and personal now, interestingly, she is a member of the Trump family. She's Laura Trump, but she's also an in-law. So she has a little bit of what you could call in-law objectivity. Uh, and for those reasons, I thought she'd be perfect. Also, she happens to be the co-chair of the RNC, the Republican National Committee. And one of the themes in the film, which is unavoidable these days, the topic of election fraud, is this going to be a free and fair election? I wanted to discuss with her what the RNC can do and is doing uh, to make sure that uh, all the votes count in the proper way. What do you think um, uh, your success has been with these movies? I have noticed that your timing of these movies is as good as the topics. Uh, there seems to be a deep state conspiracy that has morphed over the last 10 years in general. And that's why it precedes Donald Trump, if you look at it, because after all, it was Obama who caused you some heartburn and Hillary didn't help any. And it took Donald Trump to pardon you from the false allegations that were brought against you. Uh, someone puts a gun to your head, uh, I guess you'd admit to anything. And I t I'm deeply angered by it because as a former political official myself, Dinesh, I had that experience as well. You, Donald Trump, and myself have something in common in that way is that uh, the unjust selective prosecution that goes on in this nation. How do you, how, I want to get into where we go forward with some of the solutions for this nation. And I look at your films as being so valuable in getting that getting that message out your take the we work hard to make the films very topical and um also to have new information that people don't know about so 2000 mules is a classic example it just shows you what happened in the 2020 election it doesn't even just tell you about it it shows you you actually can see surveillance video you can look at the uh, the outcome of cell phone geo tracking in this film we show you, there's a section called the ballot makers, and you can actually see how easy it is 
uh, to find vulnerabilities in our election system, and in this particular case, actually make and reproduce an, uh, 10,000, 100,000 ballots. So it's crazy. Um, the, um, the way to make a good film, and, and this is why I like people to see the films in the theater if they, if they can. This film will later, of course, be in streaming. It'll be in DVD. But if you can go in the theater, please do. The film is in theaters now uh, in 800 uh, plus theaters. And the, the website is vindicatingtrump.com. If you plug in your city or your town, boom, all the theaters will come up. So see it in the theater. I think a good um, documentary film has all the same elements as a good feature film. It has character, plot, uh, suspense, uh, climax. It has a powerful musical score that provides the kind of emotional underpinning of the film. So, you know, some people think of these films as just kind of, quote, messaging. But I think you need to make the film cinematic, entertaining, moving, inspirational. And if you do all those things, you can then also include a lot of messaging. But the messaging can't be the whole of the film. You did mention within the film the rot of the government. Um, uh, the movie has revealed, in my opinion, through your artistry in production, a, a magical message that I hope people pick up on. I'm glad you threw the plug out there on where to see the movie right now and the future streaming. But I'm concerned about what the name of the next movie is going to be. I'm thinking maybe America Restored or America Vindicated because we have lost our democracy, our constitutional republic. It was General Mike Flynn who just said earlier today on some other show uh, that he's um, concerned about the next 30 days prior to this election as being pivotal, pivotal with all of the issues going on, not only in the United States, but around the world, we're, we're, we're sit, your, your message sits against a backdrop of what I consider a deep state conspiracy to cause co confusion, which makes us more vulnerable. And your movie has led right into that, that point. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, the reason we put the movies in the theater, by the way, is to do an end run around the media, to do an end yeah. run around digital censorship. Uh, so uh, the other thing about films is that they appeal to the head and the heart. And so in this way, they are convincing at, at, all, at all levels. Now, I think when Trump first came in in 2016, he knew that the media was left wing, academia was left wing, Hollywood was left wing. I don't think he knew that the FBI was left wing or the CIA or the military uh, or or for that matter, the, the people at the CDC or the NIH. In other words, the, the doctors in the white coats. So Trump has done a great deal to now expose a lot of that, to, to make sure that a lot of these institutions have now earned our distrust. And I think in the second term, we're going to see uh, Trump more vigorously set himself to the task of cleaning up these institutions, fumigating them from the top to the bottom. And he needs good people to do that. But of course, before any of that happens, he has to get across the finish line. There's going to be, and there is a desperate effort to prevent that from happening. And this film is part of the weaponry, if you will, of just trying to get the message out and show people, you know, you'll even have some Republicans who say, well, you know, I, I don't like the guy, but I like his policies. Or, yeah. you know, he needs to shut his mouth. And, and I think to myself, you know, you're asking for a new and different Trump. And little do you realize that for this crisis, for the situation that we find ourselves in as a country, this guy is actually perfectly suited to the job. You don't need to fix him and remake him. He has precisely the virtues that are needed in this dire situation. Maybe he's not the perfect guy at every time, but he is the perfect guy for our time. Folks, we're so uh, proud to ha be able to have Dinesh D'Souza with us, an American citizen, formerly uh, India, renounced his Indian citizenship because he was a proud, uh, uh, he became a proud American uh, after he was an exchange student visiting us here many years. And uh, Dinesh, just on your background real quick, you were, uh, after you were an exchange student, you also um, served in the Reagan administration as an advisor, as well as uh, some of the uh, 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 Trump administration. Am I correct about that? Well, what happened is in my 20s, Reagan brought a lot of young people into government. We were part of a kind of young gang of conservatives who were in the Reagan White House. And it was a wonderful time. And we learned a lot. And we got to see Reagan up close. Uh, a lot of times, I think I'm, I find myself comparing Reagan and Trump. And they're similar in some ways. 
and yet different in other ways. No. It's it's almost ironic to say that Reagan was perfectly suited for the Cold War. He was the right man for that time. He would not be the right man for today. I think Trump in no. that way is better suited. He, we almost like we need a sort of a wartime general, uh, and Trump is in a way uh, equipped, peculiarly equipped for that task. And and we saw with the two assassination attempts, the level of sublime courage that this man displays instinctively without any kind of preparation or rehearsal has already become downright legendary. Yeah, and we saw that on the recent assassination attempt, standing up uh, with uh, vociferous tones coming out with uh, indignation and saying, fight, fight, fight. Speaking of that, your point's perfectly made about the distinction between the Reagan administration and the Trump administration, two different characters for two different times. And uh, at that time, Ronald Reagan didn't have this. You may recall this. This is the front page of the New York Post, March 2022, Spies Who Lie. And in this uh, heading is not all 51 co-conspirators who signed a fallacious document saying uh, uh, that it was a, the, the, the Hunter Biden computer was a Russian hoax. Instead, they all intentionally lied as part of a conspiracy that Ronald Reagan didn't have to deal with. I mean, Ronald Reagan didn't deal with this, this sort of distinction. And um, what it takes today to defend democracy and, um, and government, the survival of our democracy, leads to my point I mentioned earlier do you sense a transition, an intention, a deep state intention, the George Soros's, the uh, Bill Gates's, I could name six more, that are strategizing to take our democracy away from us? Because the Trump problems you vindicate, you show well and vindicate him for in the movie, uh, the problems of us preceded Donald Trump. Your take? Absolutely. I think that uh, two things about the the kind of police state apparatus that you just alluded to. One is a lot of those guys liked Reagan. And the reason they liked Reagan is we were in the middle of a Cold War. There was massive spending on the military. You got to remember, so the, the war machine, in other words, was being heavily fed uh, under Reagan. And, and many of us thought at the time it was completely justified. But my point is we weren't threatening this part of the military establishment at all. Trump is. Because Trump's come along and said, basically, look, Iran, Afghanistan, now Ukraine, that's not the same as the old Soviet Union. We are, Our interests are different now. This is the post-Cold War era. We don't need to be constantly going in search of sort of new monsters to destroy. And, and as a result, a lot of people who were in the Reagan camp and supportive of Reagan have turned against Trump. That's one thing. The second factor, I think, is the Obama factor. And that is Obama came in. Uh, with the very malevolent intention of corrupting these agencies and weaponizing them. I might have been one of the first targets. In fact, at the time, I didn't realize it. I didn't know that my my little case involving campaign finance reform was a prelude to what would happen to Carter Page, Papadopoulos, Michael Flynn, now, of course, Trump. Uh, but looking back, it was um, the kind of early tracker uh, of what has now become a... Um, an absolute uh, weaponization of government at so many different levels uh, and has spread even to institutions like, like the health authorities, as we saw under COVID. Yeah, and um, it has spread further in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in retaliation intended by the Biden administration against Mayor uh, Adams, who says, hey, I just can't take any more immigrants anymore. And as a result, uh, he might he might have uh, been not the a pure saint over 10 years uh, of campaigning and uh, in politics, but only now it's revealed that he has had some campaign violation issues that are now under uh, uh, under question. Um, yeah, it's worth pointing out. It's worth pointing out that that is a signature hallmark of a police state, because in a police state, the actual crimes you do don't matter. Right. There's only one type of crime. And that is saying something that goes against the narrative of the regime. And so that's the point. From the point of view of the Biden-Harris regime, Eric Adams became a criminal when he challenged them. Until then, whatever crimes he did were perfectly OK. In fact, they would have covered up for him had he been on the yeah. other side of that issue. So this is what you call a lawless regime. In the film, we talk about how Abraham Lincoln, in one of his early speeches called the Lyceum speech, sort of predicted this. He said, 
you will see mass lawlessness in America and you will see a regime that exploits and takes advantage of that and tries to manipulate that to subvert our constitutional republic. Now, the left says the threat is coming from Trump, uh, but no, I mean, what did Trump do that was tyrannical in his term in office? Nothing. So yeah. the tyrannical elements of censorship, political targeting, criminalization of political differences, trying to get rid of the leader of the opposition party, all of that is coming from the Democrats and from the left. Yeah, but it's interesting you pointed out just in that segment on, on Lincoln that it's both Lincoln and Trump that agreed that this had to happen outside the unilateral control or tyr tyrannical authority of a leader. Rather, it should come from a constitutional amendment or a, a statutory uh, change at large, not from the actions of one tyrant, if you will. And I think you brought that uh, distinction out perfectly in the movie, whereas today, You've got a Nancy Pelosi tearing up a speech at a State of the Union message, thinking that uh, there's some sort of authority vested in her that distinguishes, that, um, uh, that takes away, that quashes the merits of Donald Trump's speech. Isn't it the same person? I hope we talk about this again in the future, if not, if not today, that that same person was approached with Cash Patel. Hey, Nancy, we need 20,000 uh, National Guard at the Capitol were concerned about the tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, only to then accuse him a day later, Trump that is, of a, a alleged insurrection that he fostered. Well, how would a person be fostering an insurrection if in fact he was trying to prevent it from happening two days early, earlier and Pelosi shut it down, wouldn't cooperate with Cash Patel's request on behalf of Trump? Your comment? Yeah, I agree with all this. I also think it's it is correct to bring in people like Pelosi and Schumer here. And here's why the Democrats these days are functioning as a junta or as a regime. It's quite obvious that Biden, for example, although he was the figurehead of, for, for the past four years, wasn't really running things. He was in the canoe, but he wasn't steering the canoe. It's almost like the Democrats said to Biden, hey, listen, you won't have a primary. We'll move you to the front but you're going to be at our beck and call. You say what we tell you to say, and if at some time we find it necessary to move you out of the picture, you're out of here. You hit the eject button. And I think Kamala Harris has come in on the same deal. No real primary, they moved her to the front, and uh, they're gonna tell her what to say and what to do, and if she becomes inconvenient to them at some point, then she's gotta go with a smile. So in a weird way, we're, we're, we're in a country now, we, we don't really even know who's running the country because it's an unnamed gang of individuals. And it looks like that's going to continue if the Democrats have, get across the finish line for the next four years. I can't agree with you more. I'm concerned, Dinesh, that uh, the way uh, 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 Kamala has been brought to the forefront uh, you know, I don't approve of Biden or anything he stands for, and certainly his performance speaks for itself. But the problem with the process is that Biden got approved of by some 14, 15 million votes through a primary process nationwide, whereas Kamala just got propped up by the two names you mentioned earlier, Schumer and Pelosi, and the six to 10 others behind him. Uh, well, I know we're out of time. Would you just give a plug one more time for vindicating Trump and then let's let's close. Go ahead. It's a movie that you got to see and see it in the theater if you can. It'll be in the theater for probably another week to 10 days. The, the website is vindicatingtrump.com. Uh, you plug in your city or town and the theaters will pop right up. The other thing is there's a book of the same title that's coming out very shortly. And you can pre-order it now. You can certainly do that from Amazon or Barnes & Noble. But you can also order it from the same website, vindicatingtrump.com. And he hasn't agreed to it yet, folks, but I hope his next movie is uh, America Restored. How we bring all this deep state bad behavior of which Donald Trump is only a piece of the overall wrongdoing. Uh, how we restore America to what many patriots are pushing hard to protect and defend. Folks, you're looking at one of those patriots right here on the screen with me, Dinesh D'Souza, Thank you for joining me today on the Grassroots Truthcast. I'd love to have you back again. This is the tip of the iceberg, as you know, but we wanted a strong plug out there for vindicating Trump. I hope we did that for you. Certainly, and thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, for joining us 
on another episode of Gene Valentino's Grassroots Truthcast with Dinesh D'Souza. See you again soon. Thanks for joining us for Gene Valentino's Grassroots Truthcast. Be sure to like and subscribe and God bless America.